Hello everyone, this is still your wound and lymph edema bro broadcasting from beautiful Napa Valley, Northern California, United States. Anyway, I was going to talk about Asher, E S A E S H A R. So, you know, when a necrotic tissue will become dry and you know that they are deprived of blood supply and later on you will become so dry literally and adherent to the wound base um, and then they are presented to you so the question is are you gonna de debris this uh, as sure are you are you gonna remove okay because you know that the concept of wound healing the first thing there is the letter d with this debridement but we need to be very careful that we need to debrid a wound when it's needed so when you see an asher like that you always look for the location if the location of the asher is at the distal part of the extremity say for example on the toes on the heels um, those are the end road for circulation it will give you a little bit of suspicion that there must be uh, starvation or there's a severe uh, circulatory compromise so look at the history look at if this patient has already been seen have been seen by a vascular uh, specialist and look what they say if not you can reach for your <clears throat> in my in my practice i have a, a a doppler okay so i use a handheld doppler and i'll usually listen to the pulses and i'll listen to the so, wave sounds of the pulses and also uh, take the ABI. If the ABI is very low, so that would be an indication that there is a very bad circulation. The other thing too is look for physical signs like shiny, uh, other tropic changes in a shiny skin and cool uh, temperature of the skin. So those are the other indications. And also you ask the patient to dangle uh, their legs after being elevated like that. And if you see a rubor, this redness, we call it a rubor of dependency. That is indication also that there might be some arterial compromise going on. So you can ask further if the patient has problem with ambulation. Sometimes they tell you I can walk, but it's limited because I have some pain on my calf after walking a uh, uh, few miles or something like that or not even miles sometimes even even like few feet and they will complain of um, uh, pain on the calf here that is an indication of what we call intermittent claudications those are uh, only some of the classic signs that there is a severe arterial or circulatory compromise the question is are you gonna debris the asher my answer is usually no because if you do the likelihood of healing is very uh, very slim or uh, zero to none so you are just gonna create an open wounds that will expose the wound to further infection anyway um, but when to debrid an asher if you palpate and you feel a sign of fluctuance meaning to say that if you move the area and it's uh, what do you call this um, it's mobile and you could feel some uh, indication of fluid that's what we call fluctuance especially if it's in comes in come in combination of swelling redness and sometimes there's even some drainage that you already see on the crack area of the asher so if these are uh are evident on your assessment i would always pick up the phone and talk with the doctor and tell the doctor that i'm going to do debridement so um go ahead with debridement and usually uh, the doctor would say okay but i usually get the, the prescriber uh, attention first before i'll do anything and i explain to the patient about the risk and benefits um, and usually uh, uh, they would always say yes to it but uh, my point here is you need to be very very careful our aim is 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 good but in our clinical decision making you have to make sure that we are always doing the right thing and always weighing the risk and benefits if the risk uh, is below the benefits don't do it but if the